19 and I'm reconvening the Whangarei District Council meeting for Thursday the 30th of April. Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, no mai haere mai. Uh, councillors, we have, still have two councillors who are trying to get connected, councillors Hulse and Peters, and I'm hoping that with technical support they can join our meeting before too long. Just some, um, I'm, I'm going to open our meeting this morning with a uh, karakia. He honore kororea ki te atua, he maungorongu ki te whenua, he whakaro pai ki ngā tangata katoa, hanga i te atua he nā kauhau, ki roto ki tēnā, ki tēnā o mātou, whakatongia to wairu o tapu, he āwhena, he tohu tohu i a mātou, he ako hoki i ngā kupu i roto e tēnei ātārangi. Āmene. Councillors, I will also um, encourage you to uh, please give us any indication of any declarations of interest that you may have for any of the items that are coming up today. Uh, I will also advise, as you'll be aware, that this meeting is being live streamed to Facebook. It will then be available uh, from our Whangarei District Council website via the Agendas and Minutes page. So for posterity, um, we're all here and you'll see that that's why I'm wearing my robes and chains today for the very first council meeting that is um, being uh, live streamed. Councillors, you'll um, be aware that we received a supplementary report which was issued on Tuesday the 28th of April. It's item 6.14, Rates Relief 2019-20, fourth instalment. The um, uh, legislative requirement in terms of issuing this report within two clear working days under Lagoima was not met. And to be able to uh, make a decision on this matter at today's meeting, we need to resolve to accept this item for discussion. Um, I have stated the reason uh, why the item was not on the agenda and why discussion can't be delayed until a subsequent meeting, that those reasons are that um, at the time of the agenda closure, staff were waiting for legal advice on this matter to ensure legal compliance. Councillor asked to, to consider this matter at today's meeting to enable the change of date for the fourth instalment of the land rates to be made before it is due the 20th of May. I will move uh, that Council consider item 6.14, Rates Relief 2019-20, fourth instalment at this meeting. Do I have a seconder? And please, if you can hold up. Thank you, Councillor Innes. That's um, clear. Uh, seconded by Councillor Innes. I'll put that motion in. Can I ask that everybody um, either put their thumbs up or, or hold their hand up to show um, their support for, for that? Thank you. That's clear. That's carried. Uh, councillors, just one other housekeeping matter in item 6.3 for the approach to the 2020-2021 annual plan. There, is a, um, there are a couple of words missing from the recommendation on page 42. Um, it, it will read, notes that the proposals above may mean that the WDC does not meet the financial prudence balanced budget benchmark for 2020-2021. So if we can note that on page 42, um, although I'll foreshadow that Councillor uh, Cockerilla will be moving a slightly amended version of the, um, the motion, um, but that section does require those two words to be in it. Uh, I believe that's all the housekeeping matters before we go into our meeting. Ah, I will... Um, Note that I'll be taking item 6.14, which was that supplementary item, after item 6.3, because I think those two items belong together. Um, I also am uh, going to withdraw item 6.4, the uh, oh, beg your pardon, 6.5, the Northland Event Centre decision for future governance, governance uh, from the uh, meeting today, and um, that will be brought back to a future council meeting. So that brings us to the commencement of our um, meeting. Now I'm going to um, move that we receive the late arrival apologies and hopefully not permanent apologies from Councillors Hulse and Peters. Can I have a seconder for that please? Councillor Cockerillo is seconding. Those in favour, aye. Against, carried. 
Um, so that brings us to item four, the public forum. Uh, and obviously through lockdown processes, it's very difficult for us to have a, a, a public forum, but there is the report uh, on the public forum that we had, it seems like forever ago. Um, and that uh, report is in there. So we will move to item 5.1 which are the minutes of the council meeting held on the 27th of February, including the confidential section. Can I have somebody move that they're a true and correct record of the... Councillor Deeming has moved. Councillor Martin is seconding. Are there any uh, corrections or amendments required? If not, I'll put that motion. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Those against, there are none. Uh, that is carried. Item 5.2, the minutes of our meeting held, uh, the extraordinary Whangarei District Council meeting held on the 11th of March. It's page 16 of our agenda. Uh, can I have somebody move that they are a true and correct record of the proceedings of that meeting? Thank you, Councillor Murphy. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Reid. Any uh, corrections required? I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. Against? Carry. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, aye. Sounds to me like Councillor Hulse has joined. Yes, I see Councillor Hulse. Welcome, Councillor Hulse. You'll be pleased to know that we're only up to item 5.3. I had my hand up to point out that at that meeting on the 11th, I'd given, told the staff that I would be at the regional transporting and that's why I was absent. And I asked that to be in the, in the minutes and it's not. So, um, I, yeah, lack of skill pushing the button at the right time, but that's, that's the fact. I was at the regional transport meeting and I, I would like to have that in the middle. Thank you, Councillor Martin. If you could mute your microphone. Thank you. Um, uh, Carolyn, can we please have that noted in the minutes so that they're amended? So um, we've got a, a mover and a seconder that the minutes, the amended minutes are a true and correct record. And I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. Hands up. And those against, carried. Item 5.3, the minutes of our meeting held on Tuesday the 17th of March. Uh, can I have a mover that those minutes are a true and correct record? Councillor Cockerello has moved. Councillor Cutforth is seconding. Any corrections required? I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. Against? Carried. Item 5.4, the minutes of our emergency Whangarei District Council meeting on Thursday the 19th of March. Uh, can I have a mover that there are a true and correct record of that? Councillor Innes has moved, Councillor Cockerillo is seconding. And uh, I'm just noting that uh, Councillors Cooper and Murphy were absent from that meeting. Um, any, other cor any corrections required? I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. Against? Carried. Thank you, team, for holding hands up. It is very helpful to be able to see how their voting's going. Uh, item 5.5, the Emergency Whangarei District Council meeting held on the 24th of March uh, with the minutes on pages 22 and 23. Can I have a mover that they are a true and correct record of the meeting? Councillor Conniff has moved. Councillor Cockerillo is seconding. Uh, any corrections required? I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. Against? Carried. Item 5.6, the minutes of the extraordinary meeting held on Thursday the 16th of April. Uh, can I have a mover that Councillor Benny is moving that it's a true and correct record. Councillor Reid is seconding. Um, I'm seeing hands go galore. Are there any corrections required? If not, I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. 
Those against? Carried. Phew. Now we move into some of the decision-making reports. Um, item 6.1. Uh, contract 17001, Parks Maintenance Increase Contract Award. The recommendation is on page 30. Can I have somebody move that recommendation? Um, I just want to point out that I've, my previous job was at Recreational Services, so I'm just going to stand back on this one. Thank you, Councillor Connop. Um, you'll be abstaining from the vote in that case. Thank you. Do I have a mover for the uh, recommendation? Councillor Benny is moving, and do I have a seconder? Councillor Martin. Sorry, Councillor Martin, you're a bit hard for me to see down the bottom of the screen. I can, I, I know, I'll need to make sure I look for you. So, Councillor Benny, um, over to you. Yeah, no, I, it, it, it makes sense to, um, especially in this time, to extend the contract, and, and I'm happy to move it. Any further discussion on this item? Yeah, this is pretty much standard practice. This is what we do with most of our um, longer term contracts. <clears throat> they, um, provided they're doing the job, they're meeting the KPIs, and it's just a simple extension on what they're already doing. And um, this is the this is the best way to move forward on this this contract. So, hope everybody supports it. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Any further discussion? I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. Those against, and one abstaining, Councillor Connop. Carried. Item 6.2. Oh, a horrible thought, but tree removal within the Coronation Senate Reserve for Frank Holman walking track upgrade. Do I have a mover for the recommendation on page 33 of the agenda? Councillor Hulse is moving, and a seconder. Councillor Deeming. Councillor Hulse. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. But uh, on, on this item, I think uh, over the last few months, I think people have recognised the, the, the uh, great track snap we've got around our district, particularly in the Wangrei City. And uh, as the population have gained more more active re active recreation, it's good to have these tracks. And this is just a progression of our walkways and, so and cycleway and uh, making public access to to uh, to be good to walk through, be refreshing, be new, and every now and again you've got to remove a tree to do it. So I'm fully in support of getting those tracks up to a really good high standard. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hulse. Councillor Cutforth and Councillor Murphy. Thank you, Worship. Um, I, yes, I agree with Councillor Hulse, and I understand the need to do this. My only question really was whether, and it sounds very sort of small in regards to everything, but whether tree number number 39 could perhaps be remain, which is, I note it's a tanikaha. Um, it's, a, it's a live tree, whereas most of the other trees are dead or dying and are pitosporums, which I don't have any particular problem with removing. But specifically with the tanikaha, and if you look at the the photo on page... 40, um, it's the middle photo, you'll see that it would be quite, and the tree next, the tree to the right of it, which is a dying ponga, can, is coming out, but it would be quite easy really for the track to just scoot around that, and I did wonder whether tree number 39 could remain, given that it's the only tani kaha that is um, on that track that has been deemed for removal, and it is still alive. Maybe our parks person could comment on that? Thank you, Councillor Cutforth. Sue, can you give us a, a comment on that, please? Um, the contractor will do their best to go around any trees they can go around, but they do have to get machinery in there to deliver the metal. So sometimes squeezing the little digger through there means some of the trees have to go. Thank you, Councillor Cutforth. Councillor Murphy. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, I support this and for the benefit of people who are listening to the meeting who can't see the information that we've got in front of them, I just wanted to say the information was really good. Um, it described the species of tree, the status of the tree, where it was located, um, and it was clear to see, as Councillor Hulse said, that um, 
the majority of the trees, probably 95% of them were already dead or dying. So it's important that they're removed for people's health and safety. And just as Councillor Hull said, um, it's really important for people's well-being at this time to get out and make use of all our tracks and walkways. So it's important that we do it so that they can use them safely. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Any other councillors? Councillor Reid. Thank you, Your Worship. Good morning. Um, just on the subject of diggers, I happen to know a little bit about them. Um, you can get them if there's a metre gap there, you can get a digger small enough to get through there. Thank you, Councillor Reid, for your expertise. Councillor Connop. Yep, thank you. Um, I'm supportive of this one. It's one of the things. Oh, one question I was, um, I didn't see within it. Um, with the trees that are removed, are they going to be left within the forest itself just to break down and let the natural vegetation take over again? Thank you for that question, Councillor Connop. I'll ask Sue to respond to that also, please. Uh, good morning. Yes, the trees will just be cut and left to lie where they fall. Councillor Cockerillo. Yeah. Thank you, Worship. Look, I'm, I'm just curious. In the past, when we've see, received reports like this, it's been quite clear and shown um, and stated what the trees actually were, but there's a, a vast min number of the trees here which are listed as unknown. Um, it seems quite strange if, if uh, a report's done, it usually states quite clearly the, the name of the tree and the, the breed it is and everything. So my question is, why haven't they been? Thank you, Councillor Cockerello. Uh, Sue Hodge, can you respond to that also, please? Um, all I can say is the arborist didn't, couldn't really tell what species they were. Um, it is, yeah, as as stated there, thought a uh, few of them were Tani Kaha, but couldn't uh, couldn't really confirm that. I guess it depends on the, um, the state of, of decay as well. Um, any further discussion on this topic and this item? There being no further discussion, uh, who's the mover for, uh, for this? Councillor Hulse, did you want to write a reply? Uh, the state's no. I think everything's been said. It's uh, one of the best things we've been doing at, at the moment is making the public access for more uh, wide and, and up to a higher standard, so that's it, thank you. The right of reply has been had. I'll put that motion. Those in favour, please raise your hands. Those against? Carried. It brings us to item 6.3, the approach to the 2020-21 annual plan. Uh, prior to this uh, meeting, I had uh, contact from Councillor Cockerillo, and he's wanting to move a, an amended version to what is printed in the Council agenda. So I'll pass over to Councillor Cockerillo. must remember to unmute myself before I start speaking. Um, thank you, Worship. Look, I'd like to move an alternative to the motion that was originally put in there. And the, the motion, which actually was stated 6.3, and you should have all received this on your emails, which is actually in the first part was endorses option four, zero rate increases plus natural growth in, in the rating base and modified sectors as the preferred option for the consultation of 2021 to 2020, sorry, 2020 to 2021 annual plan. Uh, item two stays the same as the document was, which is endorses the three million uh, for relief package. And um, now item three, Your Worship, I believe the, the wording on that's just changed a little bit. Item three needs to include the, the words balanced budget after the financial prudence balanced budget benchmark. It actually says that in this item. So I've actually got the note, item three actually says the notes and proposed above may mean that WDC does not meet the financial prudence balanced budget benchmark for 2021, 2020 to 2021. Um, and then item four has a, has a slight change in it, which it refers to option four again. And item five and six are the same as the original recommendations. So Councillor Cockerello is moving uh, that with the um, as the motion. Do I have a seconder for that? 
Councillor Hulse is seconding. Councillor Cockerello. Thank you, Worship. Uh, councillors, look, I know it may seem like it's, it's, it's a non-existent thing to do, but from what I've heard from amongst the business sector, right now, without, if, we, if we just put the relief package aside, we just talk about the rates, so many of them are actually really hurting, and going the, the next year forward, they're trying to get their budgets and balances and everything sorted, and the best thing to do that for them this year is to keep the zero rates. Now, I'm well aware that this is going out for consultation. The whole purpose of this is going out for consultation. And what comes back from consultation may be vastly different. And that's great. But right now, we need to signal as councillors that we are listening to our public and the best option that we can provide for them is the zero rates at this present time. Um, again, I, I'm well aware that it may come back to the council and, and the recommendation is to not do that. Uh, in relation to the rates relief, again, we'll be hearing that a little bit further on, uh, as Her Worship's already pointed out, on 6.14. So there's no point going over that just at the present moment. But our, our rate payers out there are hurting. COVID-19 has drastically changed the face for many of them, especially in the business sector. Many of them are contemplating whether they're actually going to survive in six months' time or not. And the last thing we need to do is put any extra burden on them. And as I said, I'm well aware this is going out for consultation. So we get another chance to talk about this and we get another chance for the public to actually have their say. And that's, to me, it's just putting, signalling we're putting the best option for our ratepayers out there at this present moment. Thank you, Councillor Cockerello. Any wish, councillors wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Hulse? Yes, I just want to endorse what... Uh, Councillor Cockerello has just mentioned here. Um, this is actually a, a total change to my way of thinking towards rates. I've used to be really proactive and been pushing a high percentage of rate increases to, to make sure we get work done. But I'm in a new order share and, and uh, this term. It's absolutely amazing the difference between the boards. And I'm the representative of this board, the Akara Ward, and as their representative, I need to represent the people. Uh, and so I endorse what Councillor Crocorella is trying to do. If we go out with a zero, we, we make sure consultation happens, and then we we make a decision on that consultation. After all, we are the ratepayers' representatives. And so for this this one, I've always believed if you want to get the best outcome, you must have um, concise differences in where you start from. In our in our um, annual plan, long term plan, we're signalling five over five percent. I think if um, we go with a, a nil consultation round, we're going to we're going to make sure that all parts of our rates are up for debate, and we are going to consider all options. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor House. Councillor Deeming. Thank you, and I would like to move an amendment, which is the recommendation as it reads in front of us. If I have a seconder. Looks like Oops. I have a few. Sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot to unmute. Councillor Murphy had her hand up first. She seconded that. Uh, so, Councillor Deeming, your amendment. Your amendment. Thank you. Um, we've had in front of us the analysis and assessment and information that clearly shows option three as allowing a relief package and the ongoing services that our people expect. I don't represent a ward, I represent all wards and all sectors of people. And what I have assessed the information on is what is going to be best for all, not only now, but as we go forward. We, we need to, be, we need yeah. to go yeah, out with yeah, what... Yeah, I am. Yeah. It's just because you touched it. It's because you touched it, that's why. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Peters, please mute your microphone. I apologise, Councillor Demon, carry on. Okay. Uh, right, I think I have the floor again, have I? Sorry, my head's not in quite the right space this morning either, so I hope this isn't too confused. But 
I think we need to go out for consideration what council actually sees as realistic, not what is popular necessarily. A zero rates rise is easy to say, easy to understand, but you don't see the background work that we have seen. And that's actually quite sad that the people listening, possibly, to this broadcast are not seeing necessarily the information that we have had put in front of us to get the best outcome for everybody for now and the future. To provide the relief package that we are hoping to provide, we can't do that with no income, and we can't do that with going backwards with our income. And if we don't apply the inflation costs, and the growth is immaterial because it happens with growth, not by taking more money from current ratepayers, then we can't, apply, we can't provide the services that our people want. And that has been clearly explained by the staff information. So I am really hoping that we don't go out with something that everybody will go, yay, 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 this is fantastic, zero rates. Think back to nine years of zero rates and then think to the stringent budgets we had to stick to in order to get into the good financial situation, well, the acceptable financial situation that we are now, that allows us the room to address this current emergency. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Deming. I'm seeing a number of councillors with their hands up. Um, just out of courtesy to Councillor Peters, who has just joined the meeting, I, uh, can you hear me, Councillor Peters? No, not at this stage. So we'll continue the debate and I'll bring her up to speed. Um, I see Councillor Golightly, Innes and Cutforth are wanting to speak. I'll move to, to Councillor Golightly and Reid. Yes, thank you, Her Worship. Um, I'd just like to um, support Councillor Coccarello's amendment. Um, I do understand the consequences uh, that we're, we're going to face by, by doing um, the amendment to our rates. However, we must start showing leadership, empathy and support, and I don't believe at the moment we have been, so I will be supporting Councillor Coccarello's amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Golightly. Councillor Innes? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm just uh, in support of, of uh, uh, the amendment by uh, Councillor Deming, uh, and I, I refer really to the comments of Councillor Coccarello. Uh, the, this is a real balancing uh, uh, effort that we're going through. Uh, it's not just about uh, totally cutting rates. It's, it's about uh, also providing a relief package, and there's a substantial amount of discussion and work gone into the relief package uh, that's both targeting uh, the current situation, but also looking at coming out of COVID-19. So uh, part of this is to say, well, it's not going to be business as usual when we come out of uh, COVID-19. So so we look at cutting rates, but the reality of this uh, is that we'll take a reduction in rates, we'll put a relief package in, and essentially what we're looking at is a reset, a new way of undertaking our business. We have to be an organisation that actually seizes opportunities, uh, and we've got to be at the forefront. We need the capacity to do that. Our relationship with central government and some of the infrastructure projects that they are suggesting and we're putting in for requires us to step up to the plate as well. So employment and employment generation is absolutely going to be critical. Uh, so I'm very supportive of uh, Councillor Deming and her amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Innes. Thank you, Your Worship. I also am supporting the amendment by Councillor Deeming, which and the remind, remind councillors that it's the original staff recommendation, which is something that we have been and something that we've been working on for some 
time now. Um, I'd just like to remind councillors, I guess, that um, a zero rates increase can sound great, but it's not really taking into account what that's going to mean for a year or two into the future when things arguably are still going to be really difficult. Um, also, a zero rates increase to me, if it doesn't take into account inflation, is effectively going backwards. And I just wondered if our financial officer could comment on the inflation rate, because it seems to me that uh, a rates increase of 2.2% inflation is effectively, if you like, a zero rates increase, because all we're doing is keeping up with inflation. But I wondered if uh, Mr Adcock could just comment on the inflation rate, because Obviously, the inflation rate um, will change by next year, and I wondered if you could comment on whether the 2.2% is specifically what we will be setting or whether it will be uh, changed by the changing inflation rate. If you could just comment on that. I hope he understands what I'm saying. Thank you, uh, through, uh, Responding through to Chair, uh, there are any... I put up two questions there. The first one is uh, just confirming what you said that a inflation increase effectively restores our buying power. Um, if we don't put any increase at all, in real dollar terms, our buying power has gone backwards. So it's effectively a status quo by adding inflation. In terms of the inflation rate, the figure we use is the local government cost index, which is a figure calculated by Bill each year, uh, which the sector uses as a, a, generally. Now, that is a forecast uh, for the year ahead. That is based on their best estimates at the point that they make it. Uh, that was made prior to COVID-19 impacts taking effect. So it may be slightly overstated, but there are so many contradictory pressures out there that it's really hard to say where it will go to in the next year. Uh, I do know that they have some injury is smoothing in their calculations. So... Uh, Future years will take effect, well, sorry, the next year's rate will take effect of anything happened this year. And so year on year, the inflation um, is accurate. But at any one particular point in time, it may be slightly out. And as I said, there are so many unknowns right now that the 2.2 certainly won't be the exact one we have, uh, but is the best estimate available to anybody in the sector at this point in time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Adcock. I think the, the main point I take from this, and I think that councillors really need to consider, is that if we don't actually take into account inflation, we effectively will be going backwards. And so I think that the 2.2% or thereabouts is the only reasonable rate that we can set that takes into account the current situation. We're already dropping back. We're making cuts. We're demonstrating that we're taking the pain along with the rate pay, our ratepayers, but I think we absolutely need to cover our inflation costs. So that's why I'm supporting Councillor Deming's amendment and the original recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cutforth. I have Councillor Reid and then I see Councillor Connop. Before I move to you, Councillor Reid, I apologise. I'm just going to check that Councillor Peters can now hear the conversation. It's looking like she's having trouble with her. Uh, I have. I can only minimally hear, but um, I can hear all the councillors just. I have trouble hearing Alan. Um, could I please have Councillor Deeming's proposal read out, please? Thank you, Councillor Peters. Councillor Peters, the original motion. Uh, can you all please mute? Councillor Peters, the original motion was moved by Councillor Cockerillo that we go out for consultation on a zero rates increase. And Councillor Deeming has moved an amendment to go with endorsing option three, which is as in per our uh, council papers. And so we've had, uh, we've got a motion on the books to go for zero and an amendment to go with option three, which is the inflation increase. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. And I'm now going to go to Councillor Reid uh, to speak to either the amendment or the original motion. Thank you, Your Worship. Through the Chair, I've got to stick with the recommendation that we have in our agenda, which is Shelley's, oh, sorry, Councillor Deeming's um, amendment. Now, I'm a, I'm a business owner myself, 
and I'm going through a bit of pain here as well. Um, we've got over a dozen staff that we've we've got to look after, a business and land that we need to pay rates on. If we don't, we're not going to get the services that we we require to keep it running, i.e. water, rubbish, all the bits that go with it. Um, you did right, Phil. If you want the best in outcome, you've got to have the best input. And if we don't have the input, we're not going to get a good outcome. Um, yeah, I, I just think we're, we're going to have to reduce service levels even if we stick with this 2.2%. So for me, that's the absolute minimum we can go with. Otherwise, we're going to go backwards. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reid. Councillor Connor. Um Yes, no, thank you. I'm in support of the, the smaller one, not the no rates, because with everybody out there with such high expectations for what we can provide for them, we need to be able to make sure we're still being able to provide that service. With money being a fickle thing, with money going up and down and the growth and increase and inflation and whatnot, it's something that we can't really change that well unless we can actually get it to be dealt with. Um, we can't really do anything about it. I mean, the donor economics kind of model shows that we have our bases and we have the other things. We have to live within our means. The growth model just continues to grow. And when does it actually stop? When is it going to crash? When is it going to pop? We have to make sure we're looking after the transportation, the water, the solid waste, wastewater, stormwater, flood protection, community facilities and services, governance and strategy, planning and regulation and services and support services for the communities that we live within. I personally get out there and volunteer picking up rubbish because I know the fact that we're human, we can't get everything done. And I want to put my effort back into helping the community too. I don't expect everybody to do everything. We all need to chip in and do our part. And if we can do more than pay money by doing volunteer services and whatnot, we're going to get a better service out of it because we expect of ourselves what we expect of others. We can't, we can't rely on other people to get we can to save the planet we have to do it ourselves we have to make sure we're doing this with this um rates increase in a manner of speaking it is due to the fact that the growth in inflation is it's not a major increase the worry will be if we don't do it now if we don't put it up a slight amount in 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 response with the value of the dollar it will lose the value of what we're already paying. If we stay at what it is, we will lose the value of how much we're getting out of it. The services that we are still looking after, the water and everything, and the essential services, if everybody expects people to be paid more, we have to be able to get more to be able to pay more to be able to get the services to be able to get upgraded unless they want to take care of themselves or deal with bumpy roads themselves. Personally, I'm happy with going down a dirt road or with a couple of smaller holes. I mean, I can deal with that. I've, I've, I've got no issue with that. I'd rather see the roads, the, the dirt roads getting sealed if necessary. I'd, see, I'd like to see the footpaths being upgraded so that everybody can actually use them safely with regards to all this and if we go if, I'm worried about the giant increase that would be happening if we don't do a small amount now because already we're that people don't like extra costs I don't like extra costs I but I'm happy to pay more money to be able to get services that will look after our community and myself and we need to be able to look after as many people as we possibly can while balancing that out with everybody because everybody has different needs. I personally can put up with a few things that others can't. I use services. I don't use services. But at the same time, I know that's the bigger community. We've got 96,000 um, residents out there and they're growing. And who knows how much, how many people are going to be moving up from Auckland as well because that, that, area is going to be trying to spread out. They're going to move out of there because everybody's going online now and the options are there. So we need to be able to make sure we're looking after our community. So I'll be supporting the um, original motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Connor. I've got Councillor Benny, then Councillor Murphy. Yeah, I've, I've, um, I've thought long and hard about this, but I have been a um, supporter of the zero rates increase from the very start, not because it's a popular decision and somebody might go, yay, that's great, because I think we need to set leadership. I think we need to set an example that there are repercussions for that, but um, we, everybody is hurting out there, a little pain our way for a short while, I think it's from us. 
Um, if the inclusion of the $3 million relief includes relief, happy to go to point two. Below the room and in there, there is no... Um, if I look at a business in Carmo, Waipu, CBD, look at what they, their rate, what relief they will get, there is a deferment possible, and that's all. So I am happy to support Councillor Cockerella's motion for the zero rate increase. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Benny. Councillor Murphy, then Councillor Martin. Mm. Um, thank you. I think Councillor Deeming um, summed it up really clearly. And I think, um, as Councillor Innes said, what we're looking at here is going out for consultation on a proposed 2.2% increase, which is a balanced approach. We're still making big cuts. We're, we're also losing income. So not only are we... Uh, um, proposing a lower rate increase than we had planned in our long-term plan, but we're also losing income from our fees and charges and our other incomes. So we're already, you know, trying to, we'll be trying to plan and carry out everything we need to on less money than we had budgeted. Everyone's suffering, you know, this, the, the, the whole situation has been serious for everybody, but I think if we want to, um, be wise governors, just as everyone has explained, we need to at least manage um, our rates, taking inflation into account. Um, the key word is targeted. And so what we're doing here is because we are in a strong financial position, by going with a small increase, which is what, what we propose, it's only proposed, we will then be able to put a fund together that uh, businesses and community organisations can apply to for relief. So for me, that's the key. That's what I support. I support a ta targeted support. There's no point doing a zero rates increase across the board. That doesn't help anybody. It's far more sensible and it will be far more worthwhile going out with a an inflation increase, which will provide us with money that we can uh, support those who are in need. So I will definitely be supporting Councillor Deeming's amendment. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Martin. Ed, increasing it by inflation means we're virtually treating water. It's, the, it's effectively no increase for the work that we can do for our people. And we're going out for competition. I think everybody might have missed the point. We're going to get feedback from all sectors of the community, not just the minimal number of people that we've been hearing from lately. And we've had nil rate rises in the past. And some people who have been around Wangarei for any reasonable length of time will remember the big protests we had in the street about wastewater because we weren't doing the critical work that needed to be done. And if we don't have sufficient income in this year, we won't be able to take advantage of all of the government funds that are coming available, all of the subsidised projects and all of the things that we are looking and hoping to put in applications for, some already in there and many more to come. We need to be able to have enough um, income so that we can do that. We're going to need to pre, uh, reprioritise a lot of our which the staff are already doing, and we get regular updates from Rob, which is most, most helpful, and we need to continue with that. And we've really got two choices at the moment. We can either have massive social debt and deprivation from not providing the services that our people need, or we can have massive financial debt and borrow a whole lot of money to make things carry on. And by sticking with the, a steady rates in um, how we are now and not going for big increases and not going for big drops so that we continue our work, we'll be in a much better position in 12 months' time. And I know a lot of people are struggling, seriously struggling, and I'm happy to have the um, ability for them to come in and see council and make arrangements. Um, 
We, we, we really desperately need to continue doing projects for the benefit of our whole community. We need to carry on with the critical infrastructure things, particularly our, our water and our other projects of roading that have just been, have been neglected. Um, yeah, I just think we need to maintain our, our, our common sense. And I personally wasn't that keen on item three, but I will be supporting Councillor Deeming's uh, proposal because it gives everybody the opportunity to have feedback and we'll know just where everybody is. So I'll be supporting Councillor Deeming's amendment. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Your Worship. I will be supporting uh, Councillor Deeming's um, amendment. It, however, it is a finely balanced thing, isn't it? I think the um, salient point for me is, is, and I agree with Councillor Murphy, the, target, the ability to target the assistance to those who really need it. And um, I think a, a nil, a rate rise or increase is a little bit blunt. Um, we will, we do, I, like uh, Councillor Martin, very much understand that there are people out there hurting, um, but I also uh, understand that we have significant areas of work that we must do, and I don't support running at a deficit at this stage in a, in a, for a blunt approach. So I'll be supporting the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Uh, Councillor Peters, did you wish to speak? Yes, please. Um, Originally, I supported uh, Councillor Cockerello's um, zero rates increase, like really zero. Uh, but I've re-looked at all the figures, Alan's figures, and listened to uh, other people who, you know, in the council and also in the community. And uh, really, we do have to be more sensible. And so. I, I'm supporting, I will be supporting uh, Councillor Deeming's uh, proposal. I do think we have to show that we are um, trying to keep costs low, but we also have to provide a service because that's what we are there for. And if we start to cut back services in a, in a uh, willy-nilly fashion, that's not actually what we should be doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peters. Councillor Cockerillo? I'd like to speak to the amendment if I can. Yep. Um, look, I, I can't support uh, Councillor Deeming's approach, mainly because right now our community is saying we need help. The relief package doesn't really cover it. And as was asked yesterday, what is the difference between 5.2 and 2.2%? $3 million. So the difference we're talking here to go to zero is a lot less is, is less than that. So when Councillor Deeming has said, um, remember back the nine years, we're not talking about nine years. We're talking about one year. And right now, this has got to go out for consultation. So the best, from what I see, the best option going forward is to relay to the public this is if we go out with zero zero percent increase we're giving them the best option for helping them out now again if they don't want to do that that's fine and this is the reason why i, I cannot support um councillor deemings of 2.2 percent because the ratepayers out there have actually said to me that's not what they want thank you councillor cockerillo councillor deeming thank you could i ask a question of uh, Mr. Adcock, please, um, regarding the figures that have been quoted. Certainly, certainly. Thank you. Um, Mr. Adcock, could you um, clarify the figures that we've just had quoted? Thank you. Uh, through the Chair, um, the difference between a zero rates rise and inflation rates rise is $2.31 million. Um, and I think Councillor Cockerell referred to the relief package. That's $3 million, but the net cost of that after repurpose some existing funding will be $2.345 million. So that effectively is the funding for the relief packages, which we'll have to cut something else if we're going to continue with that as well. Thank you, Alan. 
Councillor Hulse. Yes, I'll be talking against at this stage against the amendment. Um, this discussion has, has um, kind of baffled me a bit. This is everyone has been speaking to the amendment as uh, they want to keep their income up. That is the rate income. The general income for council has gone up quite considerably since council has been able to access money out of the provincial growth fund, the TIF, the funds and the subsidies for cycleways and walkways. So our overall income for councillors has exceeded expectations of what it was two years ago. Now, people, when you look at the council, you need to look at all income. I know we'll take a bit of a dip probably in subsidies for eroding, but at the moment, this present day we are making, talking today, our income is projected to be higher than what it has been for some time. The references back to the council that had nil increases, that bears no resemblance because we didn't have any government subsidies like we've got available today that I've just pointed out. The Provincial Growth Fund, they contribute to over half the ceiling of the car park by Tomato Pari Bridge to make it look attractive. Other, that would have previously been paid out of rates. And that's what I'm talking about. So let's look at the big picture here. Let's look at uh, show a bit of empathy to our rate payers. If we've got to crease, squeeze the system for a period of 12 months, well, let's squeeze it. Because if you're in business, the first thing they do is squeeze their own business. It's the people who do the employing in town and around the district that get squeezed the hardest. It's the employer. And I'll say again, as I say, every time you have a hookup like this, you always need employers before you have employees. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hulse. Councillors, I will be supporting the amendment. The, we, this, the whole globe has gone through a seismic shift with COVID. You'll recall that before the lockdown, we were on path for uh, year three of the long-term plan, which included a 5.4% rates increase. We have had to dramatically reevaluate everything that we do. And the team, with our guidance, has gone through and looked at the various options that we have available to us. They've modelled financial models and in agreement with us as governors, they've put forward option three as the preferred option to go out for consultation with our community. Once the community sees the information that, that we put out in a consultation document, they will see the amount of effort that's gone in to re-evaluating, to reshape and restart our budgets. And there are some compromises that will have to be made. We know that if we're reducing the amount of income that we were anticipating, we will reduce the operating and the capital program. That all has to be taken into account and we know that our ratepayers have been affected by this, which is why we are resetting. I do believe going out to consultation with the 2.2%, uh, which is inflation, is the, is the prudent course of action. And I know that we will get feedback from our wider community, both for those who say go back and, and um, put the rates up more and those who will say go back to zero. We will listen to the feedback from our community and then make a final decision. This is information to go out to our community that has been well considered and well guided by us as governors. So I definitely support the amendment uh, and um, know that we, our community will, will give us good feedback. Just one point on the consultation. Um, I need to br bring to your attention that the um, time frame for consultation may need to be reviewed. The, the advice that we're receiving uh, um, shows that because we are going out for consultation, uh, it may need to be longer than the two-week period that we had foreshadowed in this item. Uh, I might ask Rob to give in, uh, the latest update on that, if you wouldn't mind, Rob, um, just so that uh, we make it clear to people that, that we may miss some of our deadlines. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we were looking at a two-week consultation period. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just go back a step, sorry. 
We have asked, or I have asked, that the government relax the rules around this because the rules around consultation make it very difficult for us to change what we had in our long-term plan, um, and we have to go through a full consultation process, which is pretty massive. Um, they've said no, um, and I've tried, had a couple of goes at that, but the message is very clear that we have to go through the, pro the full process, um, even though they do tend to exempt themselves from those things, but um, we're not. So the full consultation process, um, we thought we could abbreviate to two weeks. We are in the process of receiving legal advice on that, but the advice at the moment looks like it is we're going to have a four-week, uh, a minimum of a four-week consultation process, which means we won't be able to set the rates um, at the end of June. It'll be mid-July at the earliest and maybe as late as the end of July. That will have some cash flow effects, but we will be able to manage them, I think. Um, if you do want to set the rates on time, uh, then you would have to go with, I think, the first two options, but I'm sure I don't know that there's any appetite for that. Thank you, Rob. I just um, needed to highlight that to the to the council also that they understood, which was new information um, we received. Uh, so we have an amendment um, on the on the table that was moved by Councillor Deeming, seconded Councillor Murphy. Um, I plan to put the amendment, and, and Councillor Coccarillo has called for a division. Carolyn, I will ask you um, to call out the, the division. So those in favour of the amendment, please raise your hand. Councillor Deeming, Councillor Cooper, Reid, Innes, Murphy, Connop, Cutforth, Martin, Peters and Her Worship the Mayor. Those against? Councillors Go Lightly, Cockerillo, Hulse and Benny. Can we mute our microphones, please? The amendment is carried. It becomes the substantive motion. Somebody has their microphone on. Please turn it off. Thank you. The um, we've lost Councillor Peters. Uh, so the amendment is carried. Uh, Councillor Cockerillo, did you wish for your right of reply before I put this substantive motion? Yes, your worship, I will. I think the staff might have the, the microphones on. Carry on, Councillor Cockerillo. Yeah, sorry about that. I was just, yeah, this, this is a discussion. Um, look, councillors, look, my original motion was to get some leadership, some true leadership into this. I believe the 0% was the best option that we could put to the public. Because, again, this is coming back for consultation. And, and while we are well aware this is all coming back for consultation, that's when we can really make the big decision at the end of this. But going out with the with the 0% was actually giving the public the opportunity to say, OK, well, council said this, but we actually want this. And and now my concern is, and I, I do have a real big concern about this, is, is going out with 2.2%. That, that's the motion that's been made, or the amendment that's been made. We now are putting out an option, and I don't think we can actually go backwards and say we're going to have 0% if we have a whole pile of um, businesses in the community saying they actually want to have zero rates increase. So I'm actually really concerned by that. Uh, but councillors, look, the decision has been made. Uh, majority, as always, with council, with elections, the uh, process goes through. 2.2 uh, is the motion at the moment. I am concerned with that. Um, I'm concerned with the businesses that are hurting. I'm concerned with the farmers that have got no water. Um, and in, out there, I'm concerned about the uh, residential home users who have actually lost their jobs. So they're now they're now trying to work out and rebudget their whole life. So I'm I'm just really concerned that we need to be going out there, really empathising with these people at this present moment in time. Thank you, Councillor Cockerillo. The right reply has been had. I will put the substantive motion. Those in favour, please raise your hands. 
Those against? It's carried. That brings us to item 6.14, the supplementary agenda item, Rates Relief 2019-2020 for the fourth instalment. Uh, the recommendation is that uh, Council revokes the re following resolution made at the Council meeting on the 27th of June 2019 for instalment four to be due date 20th of May and the penalty to be added on the 25th of May. Two, that Council resolves the due date for the fourth instalment of the 1920 rates to be 20 June 2020. And three, resolves to add penalties on unpaid rates for the fourth instalment of the 2019-20 rates on the 24th of June 2020. Uh, Councillor Cockerello has had his hand up for that. Is, are you moving that, Councillor Cockerello? And a seconder. Councillor Golightly. Um, any discussion? Councillor Cockerello. Yes, uh, Your Worship, that is, again, pretty logical. Um, I'm hoping, hoping that the councillors understand the, the reason for the logic, and I'm pretty certain that they do. Um, deferment, I'd prefer a little bit longer for some other people, but uh, look, if, if this is what the motion's been put up, which is the 20th of June, so be it. Uh, we need to be able to give the, most of the ratepayers as much time as possible to get things through. Thank you, Councillor Cockerello. Councillor Murphy. Thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely support the motion. It's only adding an extra month. My question was just um, with the penalty, um, I, are we reducing that to 5% or is it still at 10%? Alan, could you answer that? Uh, through the Chair, the penalty rate hasn't been changed, so it is still 10% and this Council resolved to change it. And councillors, I will remind us all that we have the ability to um, advise anybody who comes to, to us or to our council um, to talk through issues with um, the payment of rates because the team there have um, a number of tools available to them, including now, um, if this goes through, the ability to defer the due date and also um, the, the date on which penalties apply. And clearly, um, there are ways where if a payment plan is in place, um, penalties would not be um, imposed. And we've been doing that for a very long period of time, and I know that a lot of people appreciate that support that we provide to people who are struggling to pay rates. There's a difference between people who won't and people who can't, and we deal with them slightly differently. Councillor Cutforth. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, I'm, I'm happy to support this. Um, I was concerned when I got my rates bill, as I have commented, um, that we were, um, I thought, less, less than less than as helpful as we could have been, though I do accept that Council needed to have this discussion prior. Um, I like the attachment that um, no doubt members of the community can't actually see, um, which I think does indicate our responsiveness in a, a, a lot better way, but I'm concerned as to how um, ratepayers will now know this and get this information given that their, the rates demands have now gone out. So I just wondered from Mr Adcock or somebody in our comms team whether they could comment on how to ensure that this information, which is lovely and beautiful, but actually gets out to our ratepayers, please. Uh, through the Chair, we're still working through all the different channels we can use to get that out there. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that they weren't able to get this through before the notice went out. Uh, we're definitely using um, things like the Advocate, where we're now using Council News. We'll be using um, social media channels. We'll consider whether a mail drop will be effective, um, and whether we need to do that as well, depending on what we see. We'll keep this um, in view going forward. Any further discussion on this item? If not, I'll put that motion, those in favour, aye. And against, it's unanimous, carried, thank you. This brings us to item 6.4, the establishment of a commercial property committee. We've got recommendations on page 70 of the agenda. Councillor Innes, are you moving the recommendation? Yes, I am. Councillor Innes is moving the recommendation on page 
Councillor Benny has seconded that. Councillor Innes. Yes. Uh, th thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the, the establishment of the uh, Commercial Property Committee uh, has very tight terms of reference and that's uh, outlined uh, in the attachment that um, councillors would have read. Uh, the properties that uh, are put through to the committee uh, are actually uh, uh, by council resolution. Uh, so within that context, uh, uh, all, only properties that are provided by resolution are considered by the committee. The, then we have a look at uh, the composition of the committee. Uh, it, in some ways, uh, it would have been a lot more efficient to have less members on the committee. But uh, when looking at the committee, there's Councillor Benny, who chairs the Community Development Committee. Councillor Deming chairs the Planning and Development. Uh, Councillor Cooper uh, is a representative on the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and Councillor Hulse, who has been involved uh, with the previous 2020. Uh, so well, what it does is that it actually provides uh, uh, really a responsive way to uh, both uh, acquire and dispose of properties uh, in the context of council resolution. Uh, and uh, it really uh, provides a means of um, uh, another tool uh, for council uh, in its future development. So uh, getting the committee up and running at the moment uh, means that it will be ready. Uh, it may not have uh, any work to undertake in the short term, but it will be ready in response to uh, uh, the COVID-19 recovery. So uh, it's with that that uh, I, I move the uh, recommendation. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Innes. Councillors, any uh, discussion on this item? Councillor Coccarillo? Uh, yes, a question. A statement that was made by Councillor Innes. Um, what effect does this have on COVID-19? I'm sorry, I don't think this item has any effect on COVID-19. It can't possibly. You mean what effect does COVID-19 have on this item? No, Councillor Innes made, it, made in his uh, mo original motion to say that, that um, this group will be dealing with the effects of COVID-19 in, in relation to property sales. So I'm just curious, where does this come in, where does the connection lie between these two things? Um, I'm going to note that Councillor Innes was just uh, noting the fact that COVID has um, come about since we the original intent to set up this committee. So it has to be taken into account, as does every council decision in, in future. Uh, Councillor Murphy. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure about the timing of this uh, committee being established, but some good discussion about it. I think um, my main thinking was that it would have made sense to actually review the, the property policy first, um, which was created in 2014. Um, but I think um, what I do support is that when we're elected into council, you know, we are passionate about making things happen and we want to be involved in our community and we want to we want to see, you know, see change, positive change made. So I do support um, these councillors going ahead. Um, as Councillor Innes has described, the um, terms of reference um, set out really clearly that the councillors will be working on achieving the object objectives that are already in our council uh, plans and strategies. Um, I, for one, am a really big supporter of our um, city centre plan, which is a fantastic plan. It's got um, some excellent objectives, and so I think if, these, if this group of councillors can uh, go to work under the leadership of... Um, Councillor Innes and work with our staff if they are helping us to achieve the objectives in our blue-green strategy and in our city plan, um, then I think that's fantastic. So um, I, I'm sure they will um, put their time and energy in and I hope we can get some good results. 
Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Cutforth. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, I'm um, I'm supportive of the idea of a, a commercial property committee, having been through all the discussions that we've had in the last uh, however long, and looking at the various options. I'm certainly think that a committee of councillors I find much more preferable to the to the other options that were considered. Um, I guess my my concern about this at the moment is. Um, sort of what Councillor Cockerillo was referring to and Councillor Innes referred to, which is it is really about the timing. Um, whether, given the current situation and the things that we have to uh, work on around our CBD and our property and other people's property, whether this is the time to be setting up this committee or whether it would be better to have deferred it until... Basically, um, we're out of the COVID situation. Um, I, I disagree with Councillor Murphy, I guess, in terms of... I think the terms of reference are actually very tight, and that's good. And I do agree that I think the first thing that needs to do is look at the, um, look at the property policy. And I, I was slightly appalled to see that it hadn't been um, basically reviewed since well, it was adopted in 2014, which is really some time ago. But the terms of reference are actually quite tight, and so I would be concerned, actually, if that group, if it does go ahead at this point, um, plays a role with the CBD regeneration, etc., etc., because I think the terms of reference are really restricted to looking at um, sale and purchase of properties. That is why I wonder whether the timing is right at the moment and whether our efforts and our emphasis should really be on supporting other property owners get through this situation and looking at what we can do to help them rather than looking at where we fit with our commercial property. And that's why I would have preferred that this item was deferred until we were out of this situation so that we could concentrate on some other property-related issues for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cutforth. Councillor Benny. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm obviously in support of this um, Commercial Property Committee. I, I think it's the ideal time for it to be formed, um, not so that they can uh, act straight away, but just that they have the ability to act if opportunities arise. Um, the, it gives us the opportunity to, when we, when we first started this council term, we resolved that we were going to form working groups and get into some projects and really get into some stuff. And there hasn't been a lot of that. And it is now May, uh, coming up May, not quite May. And, um, and, and we haven't done a lot of this. And, and if we continue to wait, we will continue to move slowly. One of the frustrations from council is um, that everything is so slow. This gives us um, a vehicle to move along to work with staff, to work with the community, and to, to really do some um, some valuable stuff. And it's it's not immediate. It might not be immediate, but we have the opportunity to move immediately if we need to. So I'm a full supporter of it. Thank you, Councillor Benny. Any other councillors wish to speak to this item? Councillor Martin. Yes, I think everybody needs to realise that we talk about the CBD and the CBD, and we continue to talk about the CBD. The property in the CBD belongs to the entire district, and we have significant holdings outside of the CBD, significant. And we need to make sure that everybody is being treated the same. We seem to have this myopic view of the CBD, but there's an awful lot of property that is outside of that CBD that needs to be looked at and assessed. And I know it was done in the past, and we went through all of the properties, which ones we could move and which ones we couldn't. And I hope this is not just going to be a group. I see it's got three um, Green Bay people out of the five on there, which is pretty interesting. Um, but I think that they need the committee is going to need to have a more broader view than just the CBD. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Cooper. Uh, 
Thank you, uh, Your Worship. I guess um, I, I support the committee being formed. Um, I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to um, just point out to, so to, I guess, rebut some of the points that uh, Councillor Martin made about the three Green Bay people. I guess the other way to look at it would be that you have, um, and you're quite right, Councillor Martin, that the whole community must be represented. represented. Um, we have, what we have on there is a, is a fine mix of rural and city councillors. So um, I don't think your concerns about the uh, the effect on the CBD or just, just one lot of people are potentially uh, valid. I very much um, feel that there is a requirement, as Councillor Benny said, for us to be able to react in a quick and efficient way, and that is one of the biggest um, uh, biggest comments that uh, the, the biggest frustrations that people relay to um, to me regarding council is that things are so slow, and this is an opportunity to speed things up. So I yeah I support it, and I uh, I. I do not feel that um, postponing it is in our best interests at all. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Golightly. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I'd just like to agree with Councillor Cooper there. Um, I completely support this committee and the members. Um, look, I mean, it's sort of really nothing new. I mean, every sort of uh, sale and purchase of any property that um, that we have, it's always brought back to to full council. So um, I just sort of feel like we need to sort of act on this, get this sort of going, get this district up and running again, and sort of move forward. So I am totally in support of this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Golightly. Councillor Coparillo. Thank you, Worship. I actually have a question. Um, the original motion from memory was going to be about three councillors, and now it's ended up being five. Um, who will actually be the spokesperson for this group when dealing with the properties to sell, and who's going to be actually talking to the, um, the commercial property owners who'd like to actually either sell their properties or actually um, want to buy them? Who's actually going to be doing that talking? Um, I'm going to hand that on to Rob because I think that's more of an operational matter. The, um, the delegation of the, the committee is to um, is a different function. So, Rob, if you could respond to that, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the, I would say this would work as normal. So we would take direction from the committee um, and it would work through our, our commercial property manager, Mike Hibbert. Um, to, to undertake the, um, I suppose the direct negotiations, but the direction and all that would be set by the committee or by the council through the committee. Any further questions, Councillor Cockrell? Um, yes, Your Worship. It's, it's, it's actually, this is actually just a delegation group of council which are to deal with the properties that council has decided to, to that they want to sell or they want to purchase. Is that not correct? If you look at the terms of reference, that's correct. So going forward, what difference does it have having five over three? Councillor Cockerell, I think uh, Councillor Innes um, outlined the, the reasons for the uh, membership of the committee quite adequately at the, at the beginning. Um, this is a committee that I, uh, under the, my powers, I have established it. I've established the, the chair and the, the membership, um, so this is just a, an endorsement of that and the terms of reference today. Councillor Deeming, I'm sorry, um, I'm, I think I muted myself. Councillor Deeming? Deeming? <laughs> Thank you, you haven't muted, you, you have now. Thank you. Um, I am going to move an amendment again, and I'm going to move that this decision be deferred until we are back in council, in the chamber, and can debate face to face. If I have a seconder. So Councillor Deeming, you're moving your yeah, item lie on the table. On the table. Until we're, um, back. until we're back. No, because I want to speak to it as well, which is why I moved the amendment rather than let it lie on the table. Because if, if I move it lie on the table, then I can't speak and neither can anybody else that hasn't spoken. So that's why I moved that it be deferred until we're back in the chamber. 
I'm going to need some guidance from our committee secretary just to check, or, or Rob, you may have some comments. I'm just not sure of the impact of that, Councillor Deeming. Thank you. And I do still need a seconder. Councillor Deeming um, can move that as, an, as a motion rather than a procedural motion if that's what she wishes to do. Wishes to do. That is what I wish to do. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, so Councillor Deeming has, has moved it, and I see Councillor Reid, has, you, are you seconding that motion? Councillor Reid has seconded. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have the floor now, have I? Thank you. Um, I'm just concerned with the discussion that I've been yes, listening sorry. to. Sure. Having missed the discussion yesterday, which obviously went round and round and a number of other councillors weren't involved either. I'm concerned that as a whole we're not understanding the terms of reference clearly to what this committee can do. I mean it comes within my department and I'm concerned that if we're going to do it we get it right. As I read the terms of reference the responsibility of this committee is to only negotiate the purchase or sale of land as deemed appropriate by council and voted on by council. But the discussion that's been happening indicates that actually they can buy and sell in the CBD, they can buy and sell whatever, they're going to use the property group as a to promote the refurbishment of the district and the regeneration and the reincarnation and that to me is not what this property group was intended to be. And I'm concerned, and as chair of that department, I think I have a responsibility to ensure that the terms of reference are clearly understood and all councillors know what to expect of this group so that they can perform in the manner that we are expecting, which is, and so that's why I have moved the amendment. And now everybody gets a chance to speak again. Thank you, Councillor Deeming. Um, I had, had it pointed out to me that Councillor Peters had a pen up before. Councillor Peters, did you wish to speak to either the motion or the amendment? Um, I, I wish to, um, oh, not to the deferral uh, amendment, but to um, the original motion before then, if I may. Go ahead, Councillor Peters. Okay. So I'm um, how this, uh, the work of this committee connects in with our wish to improve the housing, the, the housing stock for uh, low-income people in Whangarei. So I'm interested in the housing subcommittee discussion as well. So I'm just putting that there. So, yes, I, um, I, I don't uh, support. I don't support Councillor Deeming's lay it on the table motion, but I do support the previous amendment. Thank you, Councillor Peters. The vagaries of um, distance, Councillor Peters, some of your narrative is uh, a bit distorted. And I see Councillor Deeming has got her hand up. Could I ask a question, please? Could I ask our Chief Executive to clarify how this group... Um, works with the accommodation issues in the CBD, because as I understand it, the terms of reference would not allow that. Thanks, Rob. Uh, yes, so this group was set up, or was intended to be set up specifically to deal with commercial property. Um, now, it is possible, I suppose, that a development in the CBD might relate to housing, um, but it's also possible that it might relate to retail or, or office space or something differently. So it's not a specific role of that. The specific role of the group is where council wants to purchase or, or sell property, they go into the pot and then this group um, takes it forward from there. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I see we've lost Councillor Reid. Uh, and Councillor Cutforth, have, are you wishing to speak to these back again? Councillor Cutforth? 
Um, <clears throat> would you like Councillor Reid to go first, since he's back and hasn't spoken? Were you going to be speaking to the uh, amendment, Councillor Cutforth? Speaking to Councillor Deming's motion. Um, I, I think the point that Councillor Peters raised and um, Rob has just clarified is indeed why we do need to rest this issue until we can actually get round the table and discuss it properly in a proper forum. It's been very difficult, I think, in the current situation to really discuss this in the light of some of the initiatives that we're looking at through the economic response package and specifically the work we'd like to do in the CBD assisting property owners and to revitalise and reincarnate the CBD. And I am really concerned, really concerned that the two separate issues are getting combined and without the opportunity to really discuss this in a full face-to-face -face way, um, we will continue to have that confusion. And that's why I think it is just um, sensible to lie this, on the, lie this on the table, defer it until we're back in a bit more of a normal situation. I'm hoping, actually, that in the next um, short post-COVID time that we wouldn't be doing any buying or selling of commercial property. I think that would just really impact on um, our private property owners in the CBD if council started doing that. And the way, the best way is just to be cautious with this committee. As I say, I support it. It's not that I don't support the notion. I just think the timing is best to be deferred. So I'm supporting Councillor Deeming's motion. Thank you, Councillor Cutforth. Uh, Councillor Peters, is your pen up? No, she's frozen. Um, Councillors, I... Yes, yes. Oh. Okay, we've got... <laughs> Sorry. Connection. So, can I uh, can I make a point of clarification? You can certainly ask. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, it may have been because I was breaking up. I was not suggesting that the housing issue was part of this committee. What I was saying is that, in my opinion, we haven't had a housing housing discussion yet, and then and when we do. And hopefully it's not deferred until any time that we that we actually work on it. Uh, when it when it's when we have that yeah, housing that discussion, please. That uh, that uh, has a point of order, and I'm sure order. That, that so could we discuss the agenda, please? Can everybody mute their mics, please? My point of order was that we are not discussing the agenda. Thank you, Councillor Deeming, and I, I take your point and I agree. Um, we are debating the motion and the amendment. Uh, I'm going to speak to the amendment. I will not be supporting the amendment. I believe that the setting up of this committee is very clear. The terms of reference are very clear. They, it is very constrained and uh, as the point has been made, that once we're out of COVID, we can hit the ground running, I suppose, with, um, with any details that come. The issue around um, an inner city focus, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. We need to put some focus on that. And I would love to see us talk about how we would set up a working party specifically for that. But that is not the discussion today. It is around the terms of reference uh, for the establishment of this property committee. It's always been fraught. This is a great way of going, of, of um, making uh, good strides. The, as for the policy, it was reviewed in March 2016. We will just need to um, review Section 7, which covers off at the moment. It talks about the, uh, the Mayor and the Chair of Finance, and of course we don't have a Finance Committee, so that needs to be reviewed, and we're allowing the, um, the Chief Executive to amend that section. So I'm really clear, um, and it's, there has been good discussion around what this actually means, so I'm pleased that despite the difficulties we have have in, um, in meeting together, we've managed to, uh, to progress this and I'd like to see it continue. So, Councillor Hulse. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I support the original motion. Uh, 
you know, just just think back to the last couple of weeks, our planning team won their award, a very award for their inner city plan. And all through that debate, when we set that up, I was continually going on about having an implementation plan. Our biggest thing is was we were not talking to our people directly. And this, this allows us to do that and allows us to look at some of the initiatives that are in the plan. It allows us as councillors to, uh, to get the, get the ball rolling. Uh, you know, six months of this term's gone and, and I won't support any, any delay in that process. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hulse. Councillor Murphy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, just speaking to Councillor Deeming's amendment, um, it makes me a little quite unsure if one of the uh, Councillor Deeming, who is the chair of our Planning and Development Committee, um, recommends that we defer it until we can, you know, sort some of these details out. And so I feel that that is probably a really wise thing if one of the proposed committee members is suggesting that we wait to have the conversation back in council chambers then I think that's um, a pretty good indication that we probably need to have more discussion. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Innes. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just uh, keeping strictly to the uh, council agenda, uh, as pointed out, there's a clear terms of reference there. Uh, and uh, the the other point I think raised uh, uh, has been uh, related to the policy and uh, as Her Worship mentioned, uh, it's just a question of updating uh, a number of sections there. Uh, I think procrastination is actually the real problem of local government and that's what makes us bureaucratic. And I'm thinking that if we we want to look at uh, wanting to go about our business uh, in a different way, uh, let's step forward. Uh, let's be prepared. Uh, and this committee may not actually have uh, to undertake uh, any activities initially. Uh, that, that will be the on the basis of resolution of council. So why are we procrastinating? Uh, if we're procrastinating, we're only doing it on issues that are well outside this agenda. And housing will be a separate discussion. So um, I, I firmly are against uh, the amendment because what I see is just procrastination. We need to be prepared. Uh, this is going to be part of post-COVID-19 being prepared to be able to take actions in the benefit of the city. So um, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Innes. I'm going to uh, put the amendment. I wonder um, if, Carolyn, you could read the amendment, please. That the decision on the establishment of the Commercial Property Committee be deferred until such time as council meetings resume in council chambers. Thank you. Uh, that's clear. Can I? Um, I'll put that motion. Those in favour, please raise your hands. I see one, two, three, four, five. Those against. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, the, the motion is lost. So um, I will put the original motion, and Councillor Innes has already spoken a couple of times, so I won't put back to a right of reply. Um, I will put that motion. Those in favour, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And those against? One, two, three. Carried. Uh, councillors, as I indicated at the beginning of the meeting, um, I've withdrawn item 6.5. Um, so I propose that we now take a 15 minute break and reconvene at 11 a.m. And we will be moving on to item 6.6. .6. Uh, so enjoy your break, have a good stretch, and see you back at 11.45. Uh, Thank you. 6.6, the road name, extension naming and new private 
Now, J, uh, jointly owned access lot. That's right, we've got a new term. Um, page 108 of the agenda. Can I have somebody move the recommendations for those road namings, please? Councillor Cocorillo and Councillor Deeming. Uh, any discussion on this? Uh, just for Councillor's reference, it's actually page 111 on the electronic copy. Thank you, Councillor Cocorillo. This is the vagaries of, of paper and and, um, and online. So this is with regard to the uh, the roads of Clapham Road, Sands Road, and um, jointly owned access to be named Fantail Lane. So are we all on the same page? Um, I will put that motion. Those in favour, aye. Uh, raising your hands, please. And against. It's For some good. reason, my uh, picture comes up in the middle of the screen, and I've got a little square on one side. So, do I just see what on earth's going on with it? But I support that. Thank you, Councillor Martin. We got that, um, and hopefully you'll get through some technical issues. Uh, we'll move to item 6.7, the road extension naming uh, for the extension of Pepe Road, to be known as Pepe Road. And Councillor Ennis has got his hand up for that, and do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Cocorillo. Um, any discussion on that one? If not, I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. And against. And against. Uh, item 6.8. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody's got, got going on. Going on. Thank you. Um, item 6.8, the road extension and private access way naming uh, of uh, Tiranui Drive and Awanui Lane. Can I have a mover for those recommendations? <coughs> Councillor Cooper has moved. And Councillor Reid is seconding. Any discussion on that item? I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. Again, oops, yes. I forget, I can't hear you. Against, carried. And I six the new road and private access names for the TMB developments. Uh, this is a new public road off Three Mile Bush Road and a private access ways uh, with recommendations, page 130, but maybe 132 on your documents. And uh, Councillor Murphy is moving and Councillor Reid is seconding. Um, any discussion on this item? Councillor Cutforth. Just checking, are they spelling Bunyan right? Or is it Bunyan? <laughs> just seems like an odd name. To, it's a bit like naming it after a sort of bad toenail or something. Am I on the right page? Clo Stony Hill Road, Clover Lane and John Bunyan, spelt Bunyan as opposed to not Bunyan. You are on the correct page. And if I look at page 139 of the printed agenda, um, that's how it's written on uh, the applicant's uh, proposed name oh. detail. So I think it's correct. Beg your pardon. You wish that was their last name. Uh, if any further discussion, I'll put that motion. Those in favour, raise your hands. Against. Carried. Item 6.10, the road extension naming for Tortora Parklands or Kaiho Place and Maui Place. Uh, can I have a mover for those recommendations, please? Councillor Cockerillo has moved and Councillor Deeming is seconding. Uh, any discussion on those? Yes, Your Worship, please. <coughs> a lot of these um, street names, and they, they're quite small now, and previously they would have been called uh, right of ways or a lot of things like that. So uh, are we getting our head around that, or are we just putting place names as the developers come in? Because, you know, any, a right of way is anything, for any section, any can hold eight residential sections, and on this one, I doubt we've probably only got that if if, if you added them all together. And some of them would have interest interest to their property off the uh, main street. So it's just something to 
I'm not against this one, but let's consider it going forward. Is it going to be a street or, or a right of way? Because there's different requirements for both zones. Uh, Rob, I just wonder whether one of the team can respond to that. Um, I have Murray McDonald on the phone here, and he, <laughs> his response to that was, yes, that's fine. <laughs> just, Murray, do you want to um, comment further? Well, our policy document about the naming, um, and they are in accordance with that, but I, I know what falls where he's coming from on it, but we are aware of, of that. Did, did thank you, you hear very that? much. Yeah, right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, team. Uh, so I'll put that motion, those in favour, aye. And against, that's carried. Item 6.11, the private access way name application for uh, Williamson, and that the, the private access of Hawken Road be known as Bob Williamson Lane. And Councillor Reid is moving that, and Councillor Cutforth is seconding. Any discussion on that? There being none, I'll put just that note, motion. Sorry. sorry. Perhaps if we could just note that um, this is actually the f named after the father of our ex-councillor John Williamson. So just um, yeah, people who have a long history with that with that area. Thank you, Councillor Cutforth. Yes, it was nice to read the, um, the information behind that. Uh, those in favour, please raise your hands. That's uh, that's carried. That brings us to item 6.12, the Risk Management Framework Review, uh, on page 160 of the, um, the document, uh, the, the printed document, um, so with the recommendations on page 160. I would like to move the recommendations. Uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Innes is seconding. Councillors, um, you'll be aware that in this term of, of council, we have set up a Risk and Audit Committee with an independent chair. Um, just the, the, uh, the vagaries of time. We were about to have our first risk and audit meeting the day I think we went into to lockdown and midnight that night. Uh, so um, our independent chair, John Isles, has been in, in regular contact. Um, he has been uh, providing some really valued feedback to many of the documents when I'm sending them through and just uh, checking with him to put that risk lens over our, the decisions. And um, we will use his um, experience and expertise in this area with, when we review our risk framework uh, as in accordance with this pr uh, proposed motion. Um, I think it's really timely for us to look at that because COVID-19, of course, has uh, added some other risks to us as an organisation that we will need to ensure that we, we have in our risk framework. Uh, you'll note, of course, that the, the pandemic would have been um, considered, but now the impacts of uh, such a pandemic need to be factored into our decisions and our um, evaluations of risk on any projects, but also our, our whole operations. So I think it is a really timely um, f review and we will have a look through it with completely different um, different eyes now. So we are looking at uh, scheduling a workshop to review it and to review our risk appetite. And again, uh, that's a very timely thing to, to be doing together. And with luck, uh, we'll be able to do that in person, but maybe not. Maybe we'll, um, we can have bloopers happen again with uh, people leaving their microphones on um, and uh, uh, as meetings go through. So... Uh, I will open this up for, for debate. Councillor Cocorillo. Thank you, Worship. Look, um, the agenda is pretty straightforward as it is with this, with this item. Um, my only statement is a concern more than anything that we've, um, we've gone through the appointment of a, of a risk and audit committee, yet we've still undecided about having a finance committee, which is something which we probably should have had as, as a major risk for this district. 
Uh, as I've stated a number of times, Councillor Cockerillo, all of the finances are dealt with under full council, and so every councillor has the same opportunity to uh, check our financial position and our statements, much as they did before. Councillor Hulse. Your Worship, just on that, uh, that point, this is a council meeting and we have no financials in it. So, so we obviously uh, we used to have monthly uh, finance meetings, and, and as I said, there's nothing in this agenda to relate to finance. So how can we keep, keep track of our accounts uh, if we don't see them regularly? That's the point we're making. I'll hand over to to Rob for a response to that one. Yes, councillors. Um, from memory, you emailed the all the financial accounts about a week to 10 days ago in the information agenda, um, which came from McLean. So you have that information available now. Um, and what we were doing during this period is only having decision-making papers where at all possible, um, and noting papers were, were emailed to you, I think, last week is where I remember looking at them. Anyway, in the answer to that, uh, Rob, We've been elected, and the main role of ours in governance is to make sure we have got our eyes across the financial budgets. And uh, we need to be seen to be looking at those, those things at the council meetings. To put them in a report, no one debates them. No one can bring attention to another councillor. No one can bring attention to anyone. We can't bring attention to our staff. So that's, a, that's what I'm pointing out here. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hulse, I would dispute the fact that you can't bring things to our attention. Um, that, that is how, how it works, and uh, the information is provided to us all. And clearly, if you have any queries, uh, it either come through me or through Rob, and, and we will address them. Uh, I, I agree that these are dif different times, and um, you'll recall that back in, um, in March, we actually were not going to be having any formal council meetings at all, but we rescinded that and bought this uh, ability f to meet in the virtual meeting room together, which I think is a... Um, oh, Councillor Hulse is co covering up a screen. So um, I'm comfortable with, uh, with where we're at and the reporting mechanisms that we have while COVID, we're in level three of COVID. So any further discussion on the, uh, the item, the risk item? Councillor Innes. Uh, just coming back to the item, uh, I think it's, uh, as the uh, item mentions in the report, uh, it's very opportune to be looking at the risk framework. Uh, we, we have, um, and as we've also uh, uh, got the current situation with the Looks like Power Bay connection is not as great as it could be, the same as Maunu, but uh, I think we got the gist of that, Councillor Innes. Any other councillors wishing to speak to this? Councillor Murphy. Thank you. Yeah, the information is comprehensive. When you start to read through all the attachments, you can see how thorough um, the, you know, all the, the reports are. I just wanted to make a comment that um, you know, our, the greatest risk facing us, of course, is climate change. So I look forward to getting back into the chamber as soon as possible so that we can push forward with our climate change action plan and um, and keep up with this work, because for me that is a priority of, of this term of council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Martin. Yes, I think it's very opportune that we're going through all its risk management. As we've had discussions in the rates thing earlier and, and other items, um, the risks are really out there. I get sick of hearing about the climate change thing all the time. Our biggest problem in a lot of our communities is people not having enough food to eat and, and uh, trouble with housing and all sorts of things. And I believe that we need to have serious um, priorities to make sure that our people are safe, fed and housed. And, and if we keep going off on tangents that are not on the agenda, then we're never going to get to where we should be helping our people. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Any further discussion on the risk framework? If not, I'll put that motion. Those in favour, aye. That's everybody uh, carried. Item 
6.13, the Local Government Funding Agency Documentation Amendments, uh, with the recommendations on, um, there are four recommendations, re receiving and authorising. Uh, do I have a mover for those recommendations? Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Any, uh, and a seconder? Councillor Benny. Councillor Cooper, did you wish to speak to this? Just very briefly to say, obviously, uh, this organisation is of uh, is one of our main partners. I think we've had this discussion before. Uh, we have Alan on there, I believe, as our the, is the chairman. Our Alan Adcock um, is the chairman of the shareholders council, which we are shareholders of, but also borrowers of. So it's a, a two-sided argument to this. And um, if Alan is making those recommendations, then I'm very happy to support the recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Cutforth. Thank you, Worship. Just to note for um, perhaps for new councillors too, not that I mean to sound like I'm sort of an old wizened councillor, but um, the main thing with this, and Alan might correct me if I'm wrong, is that it now enables us, um, enables CCOs to be able to borrow, and that is quite a quite a significant step, I think, that um, that LGFA has taken. Um, it will mean, well, there's certainly um, implications for our council, but, um, and I, I have some concerns about it, though my concerns are laid slightly by the fact that, um, that count, it comes back to councils for their ratification. So I wondered if Alan wanted to comment at all on the CCO issue. The other one, other issue I wondered, just in relation to this, I wondered if Alan could comment on, as I've heard some talk about an organisation akin to LGFA being set up since COVID um, to deal with financing of, I'm getting slightly vague here, but it's financing of other council-related functions or structures or aspects. Ellen, um, can you comment on both those things, the CCO issue and the possibility of a, a separate funding agency being set up? Thank you, Ellen. Uh, through the Chair, uh, firstly, the CCO's uh, Councillor Cutforth is correct that the decision to be made over the past two years to allow direct lending to CCOs, and she's correct in that they must come back to the parent council for approval prior to anything going on. Um, there's not going to be, we believe, a massive uptake from this from um, through this vehicle, although what it does allow is the Eden City Council to come on board because they do all the lending through a fully owned CCO and Christchurch um, have had to make some specific accommodations in their structures, so that will simplify things for them as well. Uh, there are some, a couple of airports around the place as CCOs who may borrow through this directly, but again it comes back through their councils to uh, give approval first. So there is absolutely no greater risk to councils in doing this. That was a fundamental uh, condition of getting support through this process. Uh, in terms of your second question, in terms of additional uh, borrowing vehicles, uh, this has been working for some time on this. Uh, the very high growth councils like of Auckland, Tauranga, Hamilton, Queenstown, although their demands will possibly go away now, um, have been pushing up against their limits of debt to revenue. Uh, we're nowhere near those ceilings, but they've pretty much um, tapped out at how much more they can borrow with the current constraints they work under. So we've been working with uh, the Treasury um, and other government departments to create special purpose vehicles which are effectively off balance sheet and Crown uh, funded guaranteed with assets vesting the councils in the future as opposed to the councils borrowing. So it doesn't affect us as it sits outside the um, LGFA structure, but it's really directed purely at those very high growth councils. Great. Thank you, Alan, for that. Councillor Cockerillo. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, on the comment which Councillor Cutforth has, has highlighted, uh, I'm just curious, and I'm wondering if Alan can actually answer it, with CCOs now being involved and in, in open to this discussion or open to this borrowing from the, from this organisation, does this allow Far North Holdings to be able to be inv involved in that as well as if Auckland uh, City Council 
decides to put up to create a CCO as well to be able to borrow from it, so therefore extending their actual um, limit? Uh, there are constraints for CCTOs to borrow through this, so they're excluded from it. Uh, so Far North wouldn't be, as Far North Holdings wouldn't be eligible on that basis. So council controlled trading organisations different to council controlled organisations, and they're under legislation that the a council can't guarantee a CCTO's lending. Therefore, it falls outside this. And in relation to the Auckland uh, Council? Uh, could you repeat that question, please? I didn't quite understand. Yeah, certainly, Ellen. It was it was more in relation to um, I understand from previous discussions and a few previous meetings that you've had. Auckland Council was at their limit of borrowing. Um, so, what is stopping the Auckland Council from setting a CCO up to then be able to borrow more money? Uh, through the chair, that's a very good question, um, and that's uh, mitigated by the fact that we the debt covenants apply at both council and group level. So there are two tests with a, um, a council's up against that limit. So we look at the individual council, but also the overall group in its lending. Also with it, with Auckland, uh, we kept them at a total amount of the total LGFA uh, lending uh, because of the concentration risk of having one entity having too much of the of the pie, um, and all the councils bear risk for that. So they're capped at 40% of total LGFA lending. So just for clarification, Ellen, it won't exclude Auckland from, from creating a CCO and actually borrowing more money? Uh, through the chair, it doesn't exclude them from setting up a CCO, but they can't borrow any more money than they are through the current structure. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, Councillor Martin. Yeah, sorry, Alan, I, I didn't hear. Did you say um, CCTOs will be able to borrow money or won't be able to borrow money through that? Uh, through the chair, they can't do. So for the likes of ourselves, the uh, landfill partnership couldn't borrow through this vehicle. Oh, yeah. Just that the reception was a bit poor and I couldn't hear. Thanks. Any further discussion on this item? I'll put that motion. Those in favour, please raise your hands. Uh, that, and those against, that's carried. Councillors, that uh, brings us to the end of our council meeting for Thursday, the 30th of April. Can I thank you all for your attendance? I know it's been tricky for, for some with um, variable coverage and some people popping in and out um, through no fault of their own. Uh, I, I, for one, can't wait to get back to being business as usual and being able to meet each other in, in person. Um, I think the, the dynamics change as a, as a result of that. Um, but I am really pleased that we have uh, got together in a virtual meeting room and also pleased with the landmark uh, first council, decision, uh, council meeting to be held, which has been live streamed. So um, I'm sure that we'll be interested in some of the feedback from our community as a result of this and um, democracy in action. And uh, the decisions, of course, today, uh, some of them have been significant and will have long lasting impacts. So thanks to all of the staff members who we can't actually see, um, but it's lovely to, to know that they are um, here in support of us. Thank you all for the efforts you've put into preparing the documents that we've been um, making our decisions based on. Um, and thank you, Rob, for, for being in the room and we can see you. Um, and uh, so part of the, the, the team. Um, councillors, my understanding is we will have another council meeting in two weeks, uh, so be prepared for that, for some papers to be to be worked on, and um, I'm seeing that there are a few people disappearing, so I will uh, call the meeting to a close at 11.26 and um, wish you all the very best. Oh, sorry, Councillor Cockerillo. Yes, Your Worship, I just want to double check on one thing. For the councillors which are in the rural areas, um, and if this, if we go on doing more meetings like this, is there a possibility that their um, connections can be improved?
Gosh, that's a big question. Um, I do, I do wonder whether we could consider um, uh, the ability for those with difficult connections to relocate to another position for for the council meetings. I, I think that's something that we we need to dis discuss as an option. Obviously, we've got to uh, maintain social di distancing and level three, um, but there may be some merit in for some councillors to relocate for a council meeting. We'll, we'll discuss that. Um, it's a good point. Yeah, you wish. Well, I only brought it up because I'm, I'm conscious of uh, Councillor Deeming and Councillor Peters who were cutting in and out as they were trying to communicate and talk and the message was, was getting half, half come through to us. So going forward, if we're going to keep doing this, we really need to have really good connections and I'm just hoping that maybe there's something that Council can do in respect to that. Yeah, I noted Councillor Benny and Councillor Innes there, um, and Peter's were also the audio was was sometimes difficult, and Councillor Reid, um, you know, visually popped in and out. So, yeah, it's not ideal, um, and I really look forward to to getting back together. Uh, Councillor Go Lightly. Just regarding our meeting in two weeks, I'm sort of assuming if we go into uh, level two, does that enable us to come into chambers again, or are we still um, having to do this format. I don't know if anyone knows. Rob, do you have an answer for that or Sandra? Uh, through the chair, if we go to level two, then yes, uh, chambers would be uh, an acceptable venue again. We still have to look at social distancing, but yes, that would be possible. 